I just finished an awesome two hour team session with a group in tech. And I wanted to share with you something that I found inspirational and scary. We spent a lot of time talking about high performing teams and optimizing how they work together. It was amazing. And one of the things that kept showing up was, and I know this to be true, you know this to be true, uh, people are burning out, right? The conversation was around, I take such pride in my work. I take such pride in my team results. I like supporting my customers and helping our customers. Um, and I also have a, you know, a people that I love outside of work. How did, how do you get it all done? And I just, I had to come here and I might even rant a little bit right now, but I want to share what to do when you're feeling like that, because it feels hopeless. I have burnt out. I have been in the emergency room thinking I'm having a heart attack. And instead it was a allergic reaction to antibiotics that I had taken for the third, um, I had switched my antibiotics the third time because I had this chronic bronchitis. Well, I had bronchitis because I was tired, because I was taking care of everything at work and doing my best at home always. I wasn't taking care of myself and I wasn't honest with myself or reflecting enough back about what you know was compelling this to happen. You know, burnout's like a virus. It not it doesn't just impact the person burning out. It impacts the organization they're in, the people that they love, the people that they lead. Um, it's a big damn deal. And mental health and priorities, it's essential right now, you guys. This is what's going on in the world today. Um, what was shared today in that session, while we did so much amazing stuff, there was absolutely a request for help me figure out how to manage my own self better so I don't burn out. So I wanted to come to you today with was three things you can do today for those that you lead and love to help them as we all navigate what I'm honestly feeling as a collective burnout, right? So the first thing is as much as you wanna help everybody else, you have to start with yourself. I learned this the hard way. I know this with the execs that I coach and the trainings that I run and the friends that I have, right? If you're not okay, you can't help anybody else. So the advice I'm gonna give to help others applies to you too. And I wanna to speak to you from my heart. And the first thing is you need to take a look at your definition of balance. Take a look at your definition of priorities and take a look at um, if your mindset is everything's important, because it's not. And we are as a society conditioned to always look at things, how to improve, look at things to be better, look at things to be optimized always. And you guys, it's just not possible right now. One thing I can say for sure for yourself and those that you lead and love is to have a real conversation about how you're feeling. And I know feelings at work don't always feel good, right? People don't want to talk about feelings. But as a leader, I'm not going to say but. And as a leader, you owe it to those that you lead and love to check in and ask them how they're doing. How are you holding up? How are you feeling? What's weighing you down? What are you concerned about? And you owe it to yourself to have the same conversation with yourself, whether it's in a journal, with a good friend, um, typing it up in a notebook, right? Being clear on how it's going is the essential first step. You have to reflect and create the space for that honesty. And that actually... Um, happened a little bit today in the session. It was just awesome. So having that awareness is the power to actually make change. Now, my awareness when I was in the emergency room, I was way down the path. I mean, that that ended up me taking a medical leave, taking three months off, rebooting my health, rebooting my mindset, rebooting my relationships. So if you're at that point, yes, you're going to need to figure out what to do and how to do it in the time that you have. If you are working or not, if your job is looking for a job, if you are at home keeping the family together, priorities and mental health, right? So ask yourself every time you commit to something, is this in alignment with what I value for my family right now? You know, I've given my daughter a mental health day from distance learning. My husband and I have taken a very long lunch walk to just reconnect. Um, being clear on your priorities is really important. And that's true with the people that you lead. So one way you can really help the people that you're leading is 
have them come to you with a list of priorities and validate if you guys are in agreement. They might think something's important that you don't even care about right now because it's not even going to matter. But if you don't check in on that, you are not helping them or yourself. So they may still be operating from a perceived importance that has just changed and you haven't communicated it. I mean, this is true. I've heard um, VPs tell me that they don't even have budgets right now, but they're being told to plan, right? So how do you plan without you know, a target? I've had employees tell me they submitted expense reports and then they got denied on things without a conversation. So if at one point the employee is thinking it's important and it needs to be done and you're like, the rules have changed, you got to tell them. And if the priorities are changed, it's in everyone's best interest if you go share that information. Okay, so the first step was assessing where are you, right? The second step is looking at priorities and having a conversation about what really matters right now. Here's the third step. The third step is grace. And what I mean by that is allowing yourself if you're tired, whenever you can to take a nap. Now that's hard when you're running distance learning and working full time or looking for a job full time. But I know, I know there are moments that you could prioritize even 15 minutes of quiet time, which is resting, right? Quieting your mind, allowing your body to exhale. Three deep breaths sometimes is a rest. So grace, grace for yourself, prioritizing your own well-being, being clear on rest and hydration and nutrition and movement. We are sitting in front of Zoom all day, every day, getting up, walking around. Um, when I ran the session today, I had them do a scavenger hunt to connect and I got them out of their seats and they shared something that represented one of their strengths. And oh my gosh, the energy changes because you even got the body moving. Um, what if it's not important to be on video all the time? What if you allow people advance notice, you don't have to be on video today so they can be in their pajamas and not worry about how they're perceived. That's resting. That's less time getting ready. So what I invite you to do in the, in the space of grace is to ask yourself, how might I allow grace for myself and grace for those I lead and love? That question will spark you to think of the micro actions you can take. Because here's what I know about burnout. It's something that happens over time. There's this analogy I heard about um, boiling a frog, which is the most bizarre analogy because I've never boiled a frog. But the analogy I heard was, you know, the frog's in the water. And if you just do two degrees at a time, eventually the water is boiling. Maybe this would be better for a lobster. I know that I'm thinking about it, but I heard it as a frog. So, you know, two degrees at a time, it doesn't feel boiling. You get used to it. You're in it. You don't even notice it. And I feel like that's how burnout shows up. So right now, those that you lead and love, they are burning out. They are maxed out, stressed out, scared, confused, and wanting to keep their shit together. They want to make sure that, you know, they look like you can count on them and that they're doing a good job. The best thing you can do is to reach out and ask, how are you doing? How are you holding up? Let's take a look at priorities and let's align on what really matters. And let's get clear on how to give everybody a break, right? This nonstop constant going isn't serving anyone and it has a price. There is a price to constant busyness and nonstop going. So what can you do right now? Let me ask you, how might you give yourself some grace today? How might you connect even with one person that you lead or love and check in with them? It's important. It will make a difference and you'll be better for it as will they. Comment below who needs this message today. What I know to be true is that if there is someone you want to tag in this message, someone you want to forward it to with a note about what you appreciate about them or the work you've seen them doing, just recognizing and sharing is actually, you know, a gift to them too. letting them know you're thinking about it. Maybe it's, Hey, take a look at this video and let's discuss, right? What a gift that would be, or, Hey, I really appreciate what you're doing. And I'd like to figure out how I could give you time for rest. I mean, what a gift you could give everybody, including yourself. So before you tag and share this, which I want you to do, grab a piece of paper, write the word awareness, priorities and grace. And then I want you to spend five minutes for yourself thinking about this today, reflecting on it and seeing what you can do for yourself because you need to be okay so that you can help others be okay. And we're all in this together. Thanks so much guys. Have a great day.